Welcome to Python Advanced 6.5, a network chat. In this video, we'll be extending upon the topic of networking by building a simple command line chat program to try and get a more deep understanding of networking. Every video will have all slideshows and code available in the description. Some quick preamble. This video is an extension of Python Advanced 6 networking video. If you've yet to watch it, an annotation will be on screen for a few seconds. The networking video covers, covers how to set up TCP and UDP connections. Onto the chat program. How does it work? Well, we have two programs. The server, which will, everyone will send their messages to, and a client, which will send messages to the server and receive messages from the server. Because I want this to run on both Windows and Unix, I'm going to go with a system where the chat only updates when you send a message or send nothing. The event-driven command line is handled differently on Windows to Unix, so feel free to change the program yourself. Okay, first we'll make the server for the chat. Let's name it chatserver.py. So I'll come across to Ubuntu. Vim chatserver.py. Okay. Now we're going to need to import socket because we're going to be using networking. And we'll import time so we can put out timestamps for when messages come in. Okay. So we'll set a host name. So the host is going to be ourselves, so 127.0.0.1, which is the loopback address, and a port. And we'll make the port something easy to remember, like 5000. Okay, now let's create a list for all the clients. So click clients, and we'll make that an empty list. Now we've got to bind, uh, well, we've got to create our socket object. So s equals socket dot socket and we're going to use UDP so we need to set the socket type to sock dgram so we'll set up the family first so sock af underscore inet and then we want socket dot sock underscore dgram for datagram okay now we're going to bind to this computer so bind to the host and the port. Okay. Now we're going to set our socket to non-blocking. So set blocking zero. And this means that whenever it tries to receive from, it will not block. It will just try and grab data from the stream. If there's nothing there, then it will throw an error. Okay. We'll set up a quick variable called quitting. Oops, quitting, make that equal false to start with. And we'll print out that the server has started. So, server started. Ah, started. Okay. Now let's set up our while. So, while not quitting, we're going to try. Now we use the try because our receive from will throw an error. There's no no data to receive, and then we're going to try and grab the data and the address of data that's coming in. So the socket dot receive from, and we're going to grab a buffer of 1024. Okay. Now if the there is a quit with a capital Q in string uh, data. So if the if the, one of the users sends quit with a capital Q, it will quit the server. So we'll set quitting the quitting to equal true. Okay. Now we'll set up another if. So if the address that we're currently receiving a message from not in clients, then we're going to add it to the list of clients. So clients dot append address. Okay. Now that we've added the client to a list, we're going to print out a timestamp. So time dot c time 
and better put time dot time in there. Plus the string of the address, so we know who the message is coming from. Plus we'll add a bit of spacing in some colons. Plus the string of the data that was sent across by that user. Okay. Now for all the clients, so for client in clients, clients, we're going to send the message to them all. So s dot send to, and we're going to send the data to the current client in the for loop client. Okay, so that'll go through the list of clients that are currently talking in the chat, and we'll send them the message sent to the server. And we'll set our accept up. So if there's nothing left in the stream to grab out with the receive from method, then we're going to just pass and try again. Now, if we've quit, we want to close the socket. So s.close and we'll close the socket. And that's our server done. So let's save this, right quit, and we'll try running it. So Python chat server.py and server started no errors and it's successfully running and waiting for messages to come in so I'll jump out of that now let's let's create our chat client so come across here our client program will ask the user for a username and a separate thread will uh, handle all of the incoming messages from the server and because the event driven command line tricks are, in, are different for each OS, we'll just press enter to refresh. Okay, so our chat client.py. Okay, so for our client, what we want to do is we want to import the socket module again. So import socket because we're going to be using networking. And we'll import threading because we're going to use uh, a thread and we'll import time as well so we can put a short delay after sending messages okay so we'll create a lock for our thread so t lock and this will just stop our program from trying to output to the screen at the same time so uh, threading dot lock is what we're creating and we'll create a variable called shutdown which will tell the thread to shut down when the program exits okay now let's define our thread function so def receiving and receiving will take a name for the thread and the socket object okay so while not shut down so while the program's still running, we're going to try and then we're going to acquire the lock. So t lock t lock dot acquire and then while true, so we're gonna keep going looping forever, we're going to try and grab the data and the address from the socket dot receive from buffer and it's going to take a buffer of 1024 okay now we're going to print out the string of the data that came in okay now we're going to write our accept so our accept will just pass and then our finally is going to release the, th the, uh, the thread lock. So you might be thinking that that while won't end, but that while will end when the error is caused from the sock received from. When there's nothing left to grab out of the receiving buffer, it will throw an error, which will then jump out of that while true. So our T lock will release and that's our thread done okay 
So let's set up the host. So the host is equal to ourself dot zero dot zero dot one. So the loopback address. And we're going to set the port to equal zero this time. And a port number of zero means it will pick any free port that's currently on the computer. Okay. So we'll set the server details up. So the server is equal to 127.0.0.1, which is the loopback address, so this machine. And the server is on port 5000. And put these put this whole thing in brackets because it's a tuple. Okay. Now let's set up our socket. So s equals socket dot socket and we're using UDP, so set up socket family socket dot uh, af underscore inet and the socket type, so socket dot soc underscore dgram. Okay, now we'll bind to this, bind to a port, so bind, and we want to bind to this host and port. And we'll set non blocking, so set blocking to zero. And now we can create our receiving thread, so RT for receiving thread equals threading dot thread and target function is receiving and the arguments are the name so we'll call it receive thread and we'll pass it the socket okay let's tell our receiving thread to start and this will start trying to receive messages from the sub. Okay, now on to our sending messages. So we'll set up an alias for the user. So they have a nickname. So alias equals raw underscore input. And we'll just ask for their name. Okay, now let's get the messages that, we're, that they want to send to everybody on the chat server. So message equals raw underscore input and we'll put the alias plus a little arrow oops yeah, a little arrow to say you can type start typing after this okay now while so while the message that the user is sending does not equal Q, lowercase q, which we're going to use to quit the program. So while they're not trying to quit the program, we're going to start trying to send. So if the message does not equal empty, so nothing in it, then we're going to try and send it. So we're going to s dot send to, and we're going to send the alias plus uh, put like a colon in there and space plus the message and we're going to send that to this server okay now we want to acquire the lock so t lock dot acquire and we'll try and get a new message to send if they want to just they want to send a new message. So message equals raw underscore input and the alias plus the arrow. Okay. Now we can release the the uh, lock. So t lock dot release and we'll time dot sleep for 0.2 of a second. Okay, so that's our sending done. So we can now send messages to the server and we can also receive messages as our thread will handle that. Now, if the player, uh, if the client chooses to quit, then we're gonna shut down equals true. So that'll tell the thread to shut down. 
and then we'll wait for the thread, so rt.join, wait for that to shut down, and then we will close the socket, so s.close. And that's our client written. So let's save this, so right quit, and we'll run our server over here. Now we've got our server running, I'll come over to another window over here, and I'll run the python chat client dot py. Oh, oh, misspelled it. Chat client. There we go. So it's asking for a name. I'll put in traps. And now it's asking me to send a message. So I'll send hello. And as you can see over here on the server, we receive a message from uh, alias traps, and it's hello. And it's coming in from port 39,236. So that must have been a free, free slot on this VM. Okay. So not much point just chatting to yourself. So I'll open up another window here. And I'll run the Python chat client.py. Oh, oh, I did it again. Chat client. Okay, so I'll call it Fred, and we'll say hello with Fred. And as you can see, Fred has popped up and is chatting in our server, and is coming in from port uh, 59,533. Now over here on Draps, if we refresh, we'll see that we get the hello that I sent earlier, as well as the Fred saying hello, and I can keep messaging. I can say hello, Fred. And I'll come through that I've said hello, Fred. And then we'll see that Fred says hello, and then I say hello, Fred. And how are you? And then if I refresh and it says how are you, I can say good, Fred. And there we go. So we've got our chat program happening, and we've got these two clients chatting to each other. Okay. So that's our chat program done, and you can add as many clients as you want in, and they can all chat on the one server. Cool. Well, I hope this example helped your understanding of how sockets communicate, as well as showed you how we can use the non-blocking non on sockets. Uh, thanks for watching.